The intent of this module is to broaden the scope of fire shelter training through a case study. It will be delivered through the story of shelter deployments on the Little Venus fire as told by two Unaweep fire use crew members, Ryan Jordan and module leader Lathan Johnson. It will be told in two parts with one exercise. Part one will deal with the events leading up to the deployments. The facilitator will then lead you in a decision-making exercise. Part two will describe the actual deployments and the lessons learned. Refer to information provided in your student workbook as well as any appropriate references in the IRPG to make your decisions. On July 18, 2006, 10 individuals assigned to the Little Venus Fire on the Shoshone National Forest as part of a fire use module were entrapped and deployed fire shelters. No significant injuries were sustained, no personnel were hospitalized, and all personnel were safely evacuated from the fire. This incident is a significant event but differs from past deployments. The involved personnel were not actively engaged in the performance of an operational fireline assignment. They were en route to a camp location to debrief with the crew they were replacing. They would not have a fireline assignment until the next operational period. Unaweep has an excellent reputation for safety and professionalism. Partly because of this reputation, they rotate trainees into the module throughout the season. Lathan Johnson's crew consisted of four regular crew members, a detailed assistant module leader, one member detailed from the Boise Smoke Jumpers, two from the Crassel Hell Attack, and two detailed from the Shoshone National Forest. All crew members were well qualified, physically fit, and experienced firefighters. Issues facing the crew included communication and logistical problems. The National Weather Service had also issued a red flag warning for a passing cold front earlier that morning. Our assignment was to um, replace, there was already a fire use module at the heel of the fire, or up at Venus Cabin, which was eight miles into the wilderness area. And our assignment was to replace them because they'd been on the assignment for 13 days. So on day 14, they were going to get out of there. Um, and basically, it was going to be a briefing. We got the main picture at the district office, and then it was supposed to be assignment hike in eight miles, meet that module, and get more of a briefing, get more assignments assigned to us, and more details, and then stay at the fire for two weeks. Okay. Um, and when we got there, the mules hadn't even had any of our equipment loaded on them. Um, this is around 1300. Um, I mean, the day started off late. We didn't, it was an hour and a half drive to get out to the trailhead. So things just started getting bumped back later and later. And so when we're sitting at the trailhead, we started assisting the packer loading up the mules because we knew we had to kind of get on the trail, get into the, get in to the module that evening. Um, the fire behavior that you could see anything of was a little bit of smoke that was the head of the fire at the time and that was way up top high elevation and there was a hotshot crew and a type 2 crew up there. So what we did at that trailhead was introduce ourselves to the new joining two members from the district, um, talked about where we're from, our fire experience a little bit and just a, just a brief, brief idea of what, what we're going to be doing. Communications you could tell we're already scratchy because we couldn't get in touch with the module that we were supposed to tie in with, which was eight miles up the canyon. We were able to hear the ICP at the trailhead and the crew that was up on top of the fire at the head. The other communication concern was trying to get the packers to have radios. Um, we knew that they were taking off in front of us and we gave them the radio and told them a little bit how to use it, but he had no interest in, in turning it on. He said, I'll turn it on if I need it. The Packers were local from the area. One was a middle-aged gentleman that's been contracting with that district for quite a while, and he had a helper who was a younger boy, about 14 years old, that was from that area also. About the 15, 20 minutes we're sitting there, the one thing that people brought up was how the, this nice walk into the wilderness in the morning, nice and cool and good part of the day, has now turned into 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the hottest part of the day. And that was the only thing really brought up other than the length of the hike without um, knowing what has been going on the last day or two in that draw. So when we left Jack Creek Trailhead, our anticipations were engaging in no fire activity. It was going to be a casual walk in, eight miles to the Venus cabin, pretty relaxed, no no mex. We weren't supposed to be seeing fire. Um, things were supposed to be a, a nice walk in the wilderness. About an hour and a half in, we started getting some communication with the Black Hills lookout. 
And at this point, there was a little bit of radio traffic, still scratchy, not real clear, that there was fire on both sides of the draw and they would recommend us to stage for a little while. And that was an event where we all stopped, got together, kind of heard what was going on. And at that point, we didn't feel any discomfort because we couldn't see anything that they were talking about, couldn't see the column. We had the mule train in front of us. So if we stopped, there was no way to get hold of them because they didn't have the radio on. We tried at that point. Um, so we knew that, we felt that we would go until we saw the fire because we still had a ways. We were only at mile two at this point when we were supposed to be going eight miles. So we couldn't really make sense of what was going on with that. And two, the mule train was in front of us and there was no way to get hold of them. So we thought we'd go try to contact them as well. So at that first stop when we heard Black Hills telling us about a little bit about the fire being on both sides of the draw, we should hold up. One of our module leaders, the one that was from the district working with our crew, knew where that module leader or that module unit was talking about. And so he told us that he knew the location where the fire was on both sides of the draw. He knew an alternate route that would get us around that area. He felt comfortable enough to keep walking in there. And so then we we proceeded on the trail up to the Anderson Creek Trailhead, or the Anderson Creek River Junction, and that's where he explained a little bit, this is the alternate route. If we need to go that way, we can. And at this time, we still didn't have a visual on the fire, so we decided to keep moving up the Gray Bull drainage. Um, and we, at this time, we hadn't tied into the mules. And so we continued about another 200 yards past, or about 400 yards past the Anderson, Anderson Creek Junction, and came up over a, a rise topography feature and that's when we encountered the first visual of the fire coming at us. This is when we knew we weren't going to be pro progressing any further. Everybody ch changed their mindset that this is a fire situation. We put our Nomex on, hard hats came out, um, you know, PPE became apparent that we needed it. Um, at this point, the fire use module advised some people to start turning around and heading back down the trail. We hadn't met up with the mule train yet, so we were actually trying to establish communication there, again with the radio. None of that was helping. We tried whistling a little bit. And what was confusing was we didn't know how they could be going that much further ahead of us because the fire was half a mile away from us. And so they, we knew they had to be in between us. Um, stood there for about five, 10 minutes, knew that we had to get out of there. Um, right when we were starting to turn around, the younger boy with five mules came cruising out of the out of the timber. Came by us, one of the members told him to keep continuing down Jack, or the Gray Bull River and get to the Jack Creek tail, Trailhead. And at that time, most of the crew members had been reversed order, our turnaround point, um, people started hiking down. So at the turnaround point, myself and two other of the module crew, crew members, one of them was the leader, the other guy was the, the local district guy. And we waited there for another minute to see if the older packer would be coming out and we didn't see him, we started going down because we knew we had no more time to waste. And I remember actually looking at my module leader saying, I don't think he's gonna make it. And that's when we knew we had to start moving. The Unuit module is now at a critical decision point. What would you do? We all know the ultimate outcome was good. However, decisions had to be made and action had to be taken to ensure that outcome. Given the story thus far, visualize yourself as a member of the crew and consider some of the possible outcomes or what ifs and the actions you would take for each. Get into your groups and discuss your assessment of the situation. Utilizing the map in your student workbook and the IRPG, determine a plan or plans of action for your what ifs. Your facilitator will give you 15 minutes and will then randomly select someone from your group to communicate a plan of action in the form of instructions to your crew. There are no right or wrong answers. 